today on an all-new Dr. Phil. Clearly, it is the delusions of the Federalist Party. His views are destructive to this country. You stupid, uninformed, harebrained, little liver. But no, I will not calm down. You're leading this country into the ground. Ugh. You are a disgusting, vile human being. Well, you're you you Calm down, calm down, down. Stop, stop, calm stop, down. stop. You take zero responsibility for yourself. Backed off. I can handle myself. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. to be a member of the Democratic Republican Party. He says that the views of the Federalists are immoral and will never allow this country to prosper. Let's take a look. My name is Thomas Jefferson. I was born in Virginia, 1743 to be exact. In 1757, my father passed away and I inherited a great deal of property. Later, I became the vice president under John Adams and eventually the president in 1800. The reason I'm here is because of the Federalist Party and Alexander Hamilton. Both have viciously attacked my character and are attempting to sink this country into the depths of tyranny. The rich have completely taken over their decisions, and the Federalists, time and time again, have proven that they want to revert back to the ways of oppression that were present in pre-revolutionary times. So, Jefferson, I've heard that the Federalists have it out for you. Yes, that's precisely what I'm saying. Well, you realize you're going to have to work together to create a successful government. I can handle myself, thank you very much. If Hamilton wants to create a peaceful environment, I'm open to talk. But his views are destructive to this country. Well, let's just see what he has to say about that. Hamilton is a vile, hateful beast of a man. His ideas to weaken the government are preposterous and completely insane. He wants us to be weak and definitely craves us to be separated. Soon enough, we will be countries with no connection to each other whatsoever. So, Hamilton, uh, I've heard you've been accused of corrupting the country. Is this correct? What? That's a blatant lie. This entire thing is just an attempt to assassinate me, the character. It's utterly ludicrous. Just like how he says that people are good. He knows that untrustworthy people of the country can't make well-informed decisions, and he refuses to admit it. Now, how can you say that? It is an irrefutable fact that I'm able to see the best in people. I believe that the people in this country are the best to make decisions. I believe that people are truly capable of making well-informed decisions for the betterment of this country. I believe that power should be in the hands of the people, because the purpose of the government is to carry out their wishes. found the root of the issues between you two. See, there is no chance for reconciliation if we don't address the issue. I think we know what's causing all these petty quarrels. Clearly, it is the delusions of the Federalist Party. They intend to infringe upon the rights of the states. How is the government supposed to serve its purpose if we cannot get limits on the government's power? To help with this, we obviously need to take the Constitution word for word and directly follow those words with nothing more. The entire Democratic Republican Party would agree with me, so I think it would be best if you backed off the ideals of this country. Is this some sort of joke? You stupid, uninformed, hairy brain, little lizard piece. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You can you can sit down, you can make attacks all you want, but is that really going to solve the problem? All you do, Hamilton, is sit there and try to attack him, while you take zero responsibility for yourself. Well, Dr. Phil, I do not know how to work together with this fool when he wants to work together with France. France of all people. France. France. Of course France. I would never support the tyrannical country that we broke away from. How can you expect any person in America to even consider adopting the British tradition? France wants liberty, and we need to help them just as they helped us in our revolution. I was the U.S. minister there for years. The fact that you wouldn't even hesitate to drop our allies deeply disturbs me. You're just angry that you couldn't be a monarch yourself. How dare you? 
Your triads are expected, but still unwelcome. Your rage is the reason this country is in shambles. Our country is not in shambles. You are a disgrace to this nation. You are a disgusting, vile human being. Well, you're your core is Calm down, calm down. Everyone stop, calm stop, down. Stop, stop, stop. Stop these petty quarrels at once. Ugh, who let him in here? Have you just shown up to spite me, or is this to give Alexander some more support? Go. Hello, it is I, George Washington. I will not tolerate such insolence. I am here because I do not want to see two of my men struck in a fit of rage. And by two men, you just mean Hamilton, right? Yes, I know he receives most of your favor. You're leading this country into the ground by creating such a small group of government officials. We really should have used the Articles of Confederation as the base of our government. Even though it had its flaws, all the ideas were correct. It allowed the people most affected to make decisions, which is vital for the success of this nation. You know as well as I do that this country will be destined to revert back to the ways of monarchy if you don't allow the states to be the holders of the power. Untrue! Untrue! This is absolutely detrimental to the fundamentals of our society and completely absurd. We need a centralized government control, as authoritarian as you claim it may be. You are just too weak to accept the truth. People need guidance, and the rich few who won't change their views like changing tide. We need more jurisdiction and freedom of the Constitution. You, Jefferson, are a fool beyond permanent measure. No, you are the fool. We need restrictions on this government through the Constitution. The government shall only have the powers directly laid out in the Constitution and nothing more. That should be the true purpose of the Constitution. I mean, seriously. It doesn't even limit how many terms a president can serve. What are we? You even tried to get the Constitution written without a Bill of Rights. How stupid do you think we are? The government should stay in its cage. We need people to decide what happens in our future, and we must not allow the British to be our ministers, lest we follow in their path. Calm down, calm down. But no, I will not calm down when the values of our country are at stake. We cannot be expected to succeed under the unjust decisions of a party that wants this country to be controlled by the rich. There is no possibility that they can make judgments for the common man. The common man is, and should be, the center of our country's economy. Small independent farms run by these men will boost the economy all the way up into the sky. The federal government will not have to take any active role in the economy and will, therefore, limit the powers, which is exactly what we need anyway. Well, folks, it looks like we're out of time. I think we're making great progress. You and Hamilton obviously have a lot of pent-up anger. And I think this is a great start to your future collaborations. If you feel like this is something you'd like to continue, I'm willing to get you a group therapist. It will certainly help you along your journey to peace. I definitely think that would be better. Uh, yeah. Yes, I concur. When you're making a change, the thing to do is start simply. You want to do easy steps first, and you're not going to leap tall buildings in a single bound. You've got to take it a step at a time, and most importantly, give yourself credit for what you do. When you make those small steps and get to the end of the week, say, wow, I did that. And give yourself a pat on the back, and then move on to the next week. And you'll really be surprised on how those weeks add up to a big change. I think this counseling is the perfect start for your changes. I'd like to thank all of my guests today and give a special thanks to the audience. If you story or life situation needing my help, I'd love to hear from you. Email at drphil.com and tell me all about what you want if you want tickets to be in our studio audience. These tickets are free. Just go to the website, click on the tickets, or you can call me at 323-461-PHIL. That's 323-461-7445. Thank you. We're here today. So long.